Hey applicant, I'm the hiring manager and in this Excel interview test, we'll have four questions from easy to hard. All right, I'll leave you to it. Understood, thank you. Let me give this a try. And in case you wanna test yourself, you can download this Excel file for free in the video description. All right, let's get into it. So let's get started with question one, which is supposed to be the easiest. So here it says to highlight in red the 10 lowest orders. So you can see down below that we have all of the units. We basically wanna highlight in red those that are um, the 10 lowest. So we're just gonna select them by hitting Control Shift down arrow. That's gonna select all of them to the bottom. And all we need to do is go over to conditional formatting. Instead of making a new rule, we can just use some of the default ones like the top bottom rules. And in this case, we wanna highlight the bottom 10 items. So just click on that. And let's suppose that we're happy with it being in red. Here you can customize if it's 10 or more, but we're okay with this. So we're just gonna hit on okay there. And you can see it's highlighted the 10 lowest orders. Awesome, so we get the approval of our hiring manager and that's Q1 done. Moving on to question two, and it says to fill the orange area. So this one right over here, using a formula that can be copied down to accept or reject a project based on the minimum requirements. So basically based on this criteria, the revenue amount of 500,000 and the profit amount of 25,000, we wanna see if all of these projects over here should be accepted or rejected. Here, an if statement probably makes the most sense. So we're just gonna go equals if, hit the tab key. And here, our hiring manager kindly points us out that we actually have two criteria, the revenue and the profit. And so for this, the logical test is going to be two logical tests. So we're gonna put an and sign in here, an and formula, sorry. And you can see that we've got two logical tests here. So the first one is gonna be that this revenue figure be greater than or equal to this one right over here. And this we need to lock so, so we can drag the formula down by hitting the F4 key there, hit the comma key. And then we have the second criteria, which is the profit. So we need this figure right over here, the D6 to be greater than or equal to this 25,000 over here. And again, we're gonna lock it hitting the F4 key. And then we can just close this formula. So that's the AND closed comma and now if these two conditions are met the value if true is that it should be accepted so we're gonna put this in quotations and say accept close the quotations comma and then the value if false meaning if it isn't the case then we're gonna put in quotations that we want to reject close the quotations close the parenthesis and just hit enter there so this first one we accept and we can just double click here to drag it all down and let's see if it makes sense. It says to reject this one because the revenue here is less than the 500,000. And it says to accept the first one as they're both greater than the profit and the revenue minimum requirements. Awesome, so the hiring manager takes a look and it all looks good. So that's question two done. If you're liking this video and you wanna learn more, you can consider checking out our Excel for business and finance course. And what makes this course different is that it's all applied to the real world. While we still cover theoretical lessons like formatting, formulas, and charts, we also offer case studies that simulate the type of work you might be assigned in your day-to-day, -day, ranging from financial modeling to cleaning a data set and presenting some visual insights. And if you get stuck along the way, you can always ask us the instructors questions in the discussions forum. We also offer several other courses, including Power BI, Finance and Valuation, and more. So if you're interested in checking it out, head to the link in the description below. All right, back to the video. Next up in question three, we have an optimization problem where we need to find out the number of shirts we need to reach $5,000 in profit. So for this, we've got a few assumptions below. As you can see, we have the price per shirt, at close to $30, the cost per shirt, so this is the variable cost, and then we've got the fixed cost of just 15,000. And so down below here in orange, we have the indicator that it says to change the units to reach 5K in profit. So depending on what quantity we sell, obviously the profit below is going to be affected. So if I put say 1,000 in here, you can see that the profit is now closer to 5,000. But as we're testing this out ourselves, say go to 800, we get a pop-up 
from our hiring manager saying to use a tool on Excel for this. And the first one that comes to mind is using the Gold Seek under What If Analysis. So we'll head over to Data. Then we're gonna go over to the side here. You can see on the right, we've got the What If Analysis. And more specifically, we want the Gold Seek. So just click on that. Here, you should get a pop-up like this. And it says to set the cell, which in this case, we want the profit. We want it to be exactly 5,000 by changing the cell. So this is the variable that we want to change. So that's the number of shirts for us. So the unit sold right over here. And we'll just hit on OK. OK there. And we should be able to get exactly 5,000 in profit. So we show our hiring manager this number of 930.7. And he's asking us if we can sell a fractional shirt. Probably we can't or customers won't be too happy if you only give them half of a shirt. So instead, what we could do here is do a roundup. So we round it up to a full number. So at the very front here, we're gonna go equals, round up, hit the tab key there. This is the number, comma, and at the end, the number of digits, we want it to be zero digits as we want a full number. We're gonna close the parenthesis and hit enter there and it's gonna be 931 units sold to reach the 5,000 in profit. Awesome, that's question three done. And finally, let's move on to the last and hardest one. In this final question, it's asking us to use two different formulas to find the revenue for France in each month. So you can see right here that we need to insert one formula for these three cells and then another formula for these. So this is the criteria. We have one that it has to be in the country of France and two that it has to be in January, 2023. Down over here, we have the data set where we should be pulling from. So let's go ahead and give this a try. And the first formula that comes to mind is some kind of a sum ifs. So it's gonna be sum the number if the condition of January is true based off of this part here, and if the condition of France is true based off of the country column. So for this, we're gonna go equals sum ifs Hit the tab key there and the sum range for us is going to be the revenue because that's what we want to find here so we're going to select this whole revenue column Control shift down there and we want to hit the f4 key so we can drag this along and it's not going to move comma then the criteria range number one is first let's go by countries so we want to select all of the countries here Control shift down hit the f4 key again hit the comma key and the criteria number one is that it has to be France. So we're gonna select France, which is right over here. And we want to hit the F4 key once, a second time, and a third time, such that it's only on the dollar sign there is only on the column. So it's gonna stay fixed at that column there. Comma. Criteria range number two. This time we want the month of January. So we'll select all of the dates here. Control shift down, hit the F4 key, comma. And then the criteria number two is gonna be that it has to be in January in this case. And this one, we're not gonna lock as we want to be able to move across. We're gonna close the parenthesis and just hit enter there. So we've got 33,000 and we can just simply drag this across by going to shift right arrow and then hitting on control R. And there you go, just to check if this is working okay, we can select the last one. You can see that it's moved to March, 2023 while it stayed still in France as it should be. Awesome, that's the first part done. And now we need to do a second formula. This is where it gets a bit more tricky. Here, you're probably thinking of doing an index match or maybe an X lookup. So let's give that a try. So down over here, we've got the second part and we're just gonna go to equals X lookup, hit the tab key there. And the lookup value for us, let's suppose that's France. We're looking for France, so we're just gonna hit the F4 key there three times. Comma. The lookup array is we're looking for France within all of these countries, so Control Shift down, hit the F4 key, comma. And the return array is we want it to return the revenue, so Control Shift down, and we'll hit the F4 key there, close the parenthesis, and just hit Enter. Now, the problem here is that it's only for January, so if I copy this across, just by going shift right and hitting control R, you'll notice that it all stays in January. That's because we haven't actually put in the second criteria of putting the month of February and the month of March for the dates. 
Now the reason for that is because by default the XLOOKUP doesn't give you multiple criteria, it only gives you one lookup value over here. So we're gonna have to artificially change this by just using an ampersand. Just hit an ampersand in there after B7 and that's, where, that's how we'll be able to add the second criteria which in our case is gonna be the month. And this one we don't need to lock there. And similarly for the lookup array, we don't just wanna look up the country but we also wanna add an ampersand here at the end because we also wanna look up all of the dates. So control shift down and hit the F4 key there again. And now we can simply hit enter. Then when we drag this new formula across, just by hitting shift right and control R, you'll notice that the numbers are now matching. If I select on this one, you can see that everything's moved dynamically. All right, let me check the results. It's actually all looking good, very impressive stuff. And you're through to the next round. Awesome, just like that, we've completed our Excel interview test. Let me know in the comments what your score was out of four. If you wanna do an advanced Excel interview test, check out this video over here. Or take our course over here to learn more about Excel. Hit that like and that subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.